First story. My husband called my son a sissy for helping me cook and constantly bullying him. In a general sense, I know I am not the ta, but I want an unbiased opinion from people in here. I 42F have three sons, Jamie 16M, Matt 12M, and Paul 10M, with my husband Charlie 45M. My middle son Matt is a little different from his brothers. His brothers like things that are typically meant for men, like sports, gadgets, video games and so on. But Matt is different. He is not a big sports fan. He likes reading and painting. He doesn't mind doing things that are typically not for boys. Another thing about him is that he is passionate about food. He has been like this since he was six. He would often come to the kitchen and see me cook, and oftentimes he would offer to help. Well, I don't let him do heavy things like cutting or standing too close to the fire, but he would be a helping hand. I call him Ramsey Jr. after Gordon Ramsey. Honestly, I like this arrangement because while I am doing all of the cooking, my other boys are in their room. My husband, on the other hand, is not impressed by Matt. He is a proud father of three sons and often likes to do stuff with them, like teach them how to play baseball, play video games, wrestle and watch sports. But Matt is not interested in any of those things. He has said over and over again that the typical things they do don't interest him. My husband would still force him to do it because he thinks it is more important for him to do things that are more masculine with his brother because it creates a bond. I have tried several times to convince my husband that he should let Matt go and let him do his thing. We eventually reached a compromise that Matt would do sports and other stuff with them once a week so that he would be in touch with his brothers and the rest of the time he would do his own activities that he liked. My husband also doesn't like that Matt would rather stay in the kitchen with me as his helping hand than with him and my other boys. He sometimes tries to criticize him by saying he shouldn't be doing girly things, he will not get any girls in the future, or he will be made fun of. The incident happened yesterday. I was in the kitchen, preparing for lunch. My husband and sons were outside playing football. Paul and Jamie called Matt to come play with them, but Matt was not interested. I told him he should go play with his brothers now while I do the meal prep, and he can come back during the cooking process. Matt agreed. But he came to the kitchen after 10 minutes and started helping me. My husband was with the boys too. He called Matt several times, but Matt didn't budge. I can see it irritated him. After lunch, my husband was pissed and told me what I was doing to Matt was going to harm him in the future. I told him, how would forcing him to do things he doesn't like help him? He wasn't listening and kept saying things like he needed to be a man and stop doing girly things. And the way I am encouraging him to cook and bake things like grandma, he would get bullied in school, and he doesn't want a son who is a sissy. I was shocked. I told him he needed to get his head out of his arse because cooking is gender neutral. There is nothing wrong with Matt wanting to cook. My husband got mad and told me I was ruining my son's future. He doesn't want him to grow up weak and fragile, and making him do girly things will make it worse. He needs to learn how to be a man like his dad and how to provide rather than take on feminine roles. And just because I couldn't get a daughter, I should stop turning my son into a girl. This turned into a huge fight between him and me, and now he is not talking to me. Matt is sad because he thinks he is the reason why his dad and I fought. I had to assure him that it was not his fault at all. So Reddit Ada, or should I just have told Matt to play with his brother, and not come into the kitchen until lunch is served? Edit. I have read the comments. I just want to clear up any confusion. My other boys, Jamie and Paul, do have a good relationship with Matt. Yes, they are different, and would rather stay in their rooms and do their own thing. But none of them have ever bullied Matt or made fun of him for liking things differently. Also, I am a homemaker for now, but my husband does help me with some chores like getting kids ready for school, driving them to school and other extracurricular activities, folding the laundry, and taking care of the lawn. So, it's not that I am totally helpless. The kitchen duty is 100% mine, because my husband doesn't know or like to cook. Relevant comments. Speculus lover. NTA. Every person should know how to cook. And it's far more useful than the ability to kick a ball for the average person. There's nothing feminine about cooking. You're just teaching your kid basic skills. Ph. Doe. All three are old enough to learn how to use knives and cook over heat. I feel the OP is overly cautious, if anything. Also, there's no way the kid will bond with his father and brothers by doing something he hates. Their father should spend his once-a-week bonding time teaching them useful skills like DIY, fixing easy problems around the house, checking the oil and tires on a car, etc. OP is the only one that's helping this kid out with his future. What are the other two going to do as adults? The older two should be able to cook a meal for the family by now, and the youngest is doing it with help. A friend of mine's kid was doing cooking competitions at that age, and not simple stuff. 
He had his own set of knives. They need to know how to wash and iron their own clothes and how to clean a house. I'm guessing their father doesn't do any of this. How would he cope if OP got hit by a bus? Editentoed. I am assuming, or hoping the OP meant that Matt had those restrictions when he first started at 6, rather than having them currently at 12. OP replied. You are right. When Matt was little, I didn't let him get near the fire or hold the knife. He now knows how to chop and dice without my help. He also knows how to make some basic meals, but wants to expand into the more creative side of cooking. Update. Hello everyone. I just wanted to say thank you for the comments. I know some of you called me a troll. I don't know why you think that. I just wanted an unbiased opinion. So anyway, I am here to update you on the situation. My husband Charlie was not letting it go. He insists Matt is wrong for wanting to cook with me. The argument between me and him never truly settled. So, a few days ago, he decided to call his dad. He thought that since his dad was in the military, he would teach Matt some lessons. So, my Phil came to our house. We chatted and talked. Charlie brought up the issue with Matt. He just talked about everything, starting with his passion for cooking and not being interested in other masculine stuff. Phil was quiet and thought about it. Matt looked scared because Phil looks like a scary guy. Phil told the kids to go to their room because he wanted to have a chat with my husband and me. After we were alone, I was expecting Phil to blame me, but instead he blamed my husband. He said he was really embarrassed by my husband for having such backward thinking. He knows that when Phil was in the military, he had to do all his chores and sometimes had to cook. He just told my husband that he was teaching Matt the wrong lesson. That cooking is a good skill, and it will help in real life. Watching sports and video games will not teach him anything valuable. There is more. I cannot write all of it, but my husband looked really defeated. He tried to argue that Matt needs to do tough things, but Phil shut that down by saying he has the nerve to say cooking is easy when he probably can't boil water. Honestly, it was funny to watch my husband being berated by his dad like a kid. Phil then called the boys to the room and told us to give them privacy. We were outside, and I was looking at my boys through the slit of the door. Matt looks relaxed, but the heads of Jamie and Paul are down. Long story short, Phil told my boy not to bother Matt anymore. He also instructed that my boys help me in the kitchen once a week to learn how to manage the house. He also told Matt to not be scared and do whatever he liked. I am glad Charlie brought him to our house, even if his plans backfired. I thought after Phil left, there would be peace. My husband would be normal and understand, but he was sulking and moping around. I asked him continuously what happened. He didn't answer at first. But then, after a lot of pushing and pestering he did. He said that the reason he didn't want Matt to do feminine things was because he my husband was bullied for that when he was in school. I knew he had to deal with bullies, but he never told me why he bullied them. This is my first time hearing this story. He said when he was about Matt's age, he would also be in the kitchen with his mom because he liked watching her cook. And they lived in a joint family, so his uncles and aunts would also live in the house like in Canto. He would often get bullied by his cousins because he spent more time in the kitchen. He also admitted that he had an interest in knitting, but had to stop because he once heard his crush say that it made him gay. So he also got bullied for knitting. I was angry at him, but now I just pity him. I had to explain the situation to him. We do not live in the past, and a lot of things have changed. And he shouldn't have to give up what he likes because people are stupid around him. There was a lot of conversation about the past and present, as well as about him being comfortable with this situation as a whole. He told me that he would not pressure Matt anymore. He realized that in order for his kid not to get bullied, he became his own kid's bully. Things are fine now. Today, all of the boys including my husband helped me in the kitchen. For the first time, I felt a little relieved by it. Also, to those people who told me to leave my husband, why? He is a good guy. I know he holds some backward views, but he is nice and caring. I understand he has insecurities, but they are not worth having a divorce. Things are fine now, and if it goes bad, I know what to do. Relevant comments. Electronic Way 2199. I am so happy it turned out well. Your husband calling his father was the best thing to happen. Matt gets to do what he likes. Your husband opened up about his feelings and realized his mistake. Maybe your other kids also liked cooking and were scared to express that. Also, your husband liked knitting when he was younger. Maybe doing that together or gifting him some needles and wool might be nice. I don't know. It was just a thought. OP replied. I don't know if he likes knitting now or not but I will ask him. He is still in his peak, masculine phase. Baby steps. Geekiner Donor Dijek. This is absolutely a case of, communication works. 
I hope things improve from here for OP and family. And Matt becomes a wonderful chef. OP replied. I hope so too. I would be one proud mama. Farana. Ha ha ha. He called a military man, thinking they'd back him for stopping a young man from cooking. Who does he think cooks in the military? Glad you've got a good Phil, OP replied. Phil doesn't share military stories that much. But yeah, as far as I know, chores are divided in the military. Second story. OP cancelled her brother's wedding after her entitled sills, insulted her children, and demanded more money. IF31, have a brother, M28, who is hoping to get married to his fiancée, F25. They have been in a relationship for a long time and have kids and a house together. So she isn't someone who's new to the family. We're all European, but I own a gorgeous house in Colorado. It is in the middle of the mountains, surrounded by forests, and has huge windows looking out on the acres surrounding it. It truly is stunning and a dream come true. A couple of months ago, my brother came to me and asked me if they could use my house for a destination wedding. While I was hesitating to host a goddamn wedding in the house of my dreams, I could absolutely understand how my dream home is her dream venue. I told him they absolutely could, but they had some rules despite my not living there. Nothing permanently alters anything in or around the house. A. No more than 25 guests. It truly is in the middle of nowhere, so guests would have to sleep at the house, and I simply do not have room for more. 2. No smoking indoors. 3. Any damage done by them or their guests would have to be paid for. Since I'm quite protective of the house, I offered to decorate and find a caterer, and that'd be my gift to them. So, I'm providing them with a venue, food, and decorations. I am currently almost 10,000 into my gift, because it's my brother's wedding, and it's what I wanted to do. Now, SHD has hit the fan. His fiancé decided she needed at least 45 guests. While I was willing to be flexible by one or two by 20. Nah. I asked her if she wanted to stack them, and she got salty. On top of that, she wants me to pay to fly her family in, because I gave the money to my other brother who is paying me back, because he couldn't afford a ticket. I told her no, and again, I got sassed. On top of that, she wants me to build a pergola which I actually considered, paint my living room cover up the beautiful wood, so f no, and also pay for the drinks. I said no. I've done enough. She has now taken it upon herself to tell people I'm coming back on my promises, that I left her hanging, that she can't afford the super expensive wedding I made her plan, and even went as far as to uninvite my grandparents, just to spite me her words were, you wanted me to cut back on guests, so I'm picking your family. I'm getting at least two messages a day asking me why I'm ruining her day if I'm jealous. Today, she called me to tell me that if I keep going out of my way to make her miserable, I and my rescues two of my children are adopted would not be invited either. While I find it absurd that she thinks she can uninvite me from my own house, the fact that she referred to my kids as rescues has me absolutely fuming. I am considering cancelling the whole thing, but I will be royally effing over my brother in the process, who has done nothing wrong. So. Is her SHT show overshadowing my need to protect my brother from a giant financial hole? I don't know. Edit to add. I do not live in Colorado. We all live in our home country, Europe. Edit 2. My brother's age had a typo. Wibta, relevant comments and additional information. OP when questioned on the second house repeatedly. I purchased this house after it had been on the market for close to two two years. It was in complete disrepair, and I spent a little over a year of my life restoring not renovating it to its original, glorious state. I have spent a lot of money, love, and time on this house, and had anyone wanted it, it would have been purchased somewhere in the two years it was on the market. By that logic, should I no longer buy that last block of cheese at the supermarket, because someone else might want it? Not park anywhere because someone else could want to park there. I might move into this home, or I might not. Also, happy to see you're getting your cardio and jumping to conclusions. The house is currently being used by a friend who needs to get back on his feet, and has been for the past eight months. I work hard for what I have, and if I want to spend it having the home of my dreams, just in case I someday want to live there, that's my choice. Verdict. Not enough info. Relevant comments. Arama info. Does your brother know that she is behaving this way? Have you spoken to him about this behavior? OP. I have. Almost everything goes through text message, so I screen grab the outrageous nonsense. He claims the pressure of planning a wedding has gotten to her, and that I should try to be patient. OP responds to a long comment on cancelling the venue, asking how large OP's house is, and if it could accommodate 25 guests or not. Redditor comment. OP. How big is this house, so that you can accommodate up to 25 guests overnight? It is decently big, but the sleeping arrangements wouldn't be luxurious. 
Think of a combination of sleeping on couches, blowing up mattresses, and sharing beds. It's not ideal, but it would have worked for one or two nights. Update. Hiya all. As an update was requested a decent amount of times, here I am letting you guys know how it all went. First, I do want to address one thing. To those claiming I am an RC hole because I am contributing to the housing crisis by owning a house I don't live in. I am not. This is a house so deep in the mountains that I need to drive 50 minutes to go grocery shopping. The internet is so crappy that I am waiting for even Starlink to start covering the area. And when it snows, you sure as SHT aren't going anywhere. This is not a house built for living full time. On top of that, it had been on the market for close to two years and was in complete disrepair. I did not steal some family's home. No one wanted it. The fact that it is a dream home is because I spent a year of my life restoring the whole thing myself. Now, on to the update. I heard they were visiting my parents, and I drove down as well, mostly because I wanted people present to witness the conversation. I told her and my brother that since my home did not suit her needs, and it was stressing her out to the point that she was calling my children names, I no longer felt like I was giving them the appropriate gift by supplying a venue, caterer and decorations. I said that I felt like in my efforts to protect my home, I was limiting their options too much, standing in the way of their dream wedding, and as a result, I would no longer be hosting. My brother seemed relieved, admitted to not quite wanting a destination wedding, and that things got a little out of hand during the planning phase, thanked me for my willingness to help, and offered to pay me back for the deposits I'm losing, which I appreciated but declined. His so, however, accused me of being petty and jealous, because I'm single and no one wants me and going out of my way to cause her stress and ruin her day. She then pointed at my two youngest children and said, You're doing more for strangers than you or your own family. The kids are luckily young enough, so they didn't catch on to this, but my older two did and were absolutely shocked, as were my parents. I told her she had all of three seconds to get out of my line of sight before I would be bringing hellfire down on her, while instructing my children to leave the room. My father stepped in, said it would indeed be better for her to leave, and told my brother that he was sorry, but that this was unacceptable. My brother agreed took his family home, and has since called me to apologize and say that the wedding planning has been put on hold until she comes to her senses. So, thanks for the input and help. I'm happy it didn't end up all too dramatic. Third story. OP and his wife want to kick their ungrateful daughter out. Don't worry, she's a grown 22-year-old college grad. She moved out, but moved back to save money about a year ago. She's employed full-time, and the only financial obligation she has aside from paying for the wedding she's planning at the end of this year is her $200 per month car note. We even paid half of her tuition for all four years of school, so she wouldn't have to pay student loans for the next 30 years like my wife is still doing. She likes to complain about our meager expectations of her dishes laundry, keeping her space clean, being respectful and considerate of the other three of us living in the house. These shouldn't be foreign concepts to her as she was only living away from home for six months before moving back in. She got engaged to a guy in a foreign country after six months of dating. Read. Talking on the phone for hours at a time. Often on speaker, while pacing the halls. She has only flown down to visit him five times, for three five days at a time. Not enough time to know who the other person truly is IMO. Their relationship is chock full of red flag behavior from both of them. She tells us she has everything figured out but she constantly presents us with examples of how ill-prepared she is for marriage and being financially independent. Recently, our dialogue has escalated from us, asking that she take into account the rest of us living in the house and how her actions affect us to her screaming and storming off, exclaiming that she can't wait to leave. The next time we have one of these heated conversations, my wife and I are going to inform her that it is no longer in anyone's best interest for her to continue living in our house. If she is truly an adult and feels she doesn't owe us respect due to parents who are allowing their adult child to live in their house rent-free, preparing her meals for her, and covering her living expenses, she can blaze her own trail on her own dime. It's not fair to my wife, myself, or our teenage son to live in an environment fraught with turmoil. I love her. But if she believes she would be better off without us lording our rules over her, it's time to watch the little Britty fly. Update six months later. So maybe the original title was hyperbolic. My wife and I would never throw her on the streets, but the tension between everyone in the house was obvious and counterproductive. We never kicked our daughter out, but I did tell her during one of our heated exchanges that she might want to consider finding a place to stay if she felt we were a hindrance to her independence. She quickly shot down the idea when I told her rooms in our hometown were renting for almost as much as our mortgage payment. The argumentative nature of our interactions was still present. 
But after she and I had several deep discussions in the following months, things improved. A lot of our arguments revolved around her stress, trying to plan a wedding, balance work, and coordinate how she'd integrate into life in a new country while still living in the U.S. We just happened to be the easiest target when she needed a place to unload. I'm a problem solver by nature, and it's hard for me to listen to someone vent or explain an issue and not be working on a solution in my head. I suppose my daughter really just wanted a sympathetic ear and no input from me on how to solve her problems. I worked actively to improve the way I addressed her emotions and opinions, and things got much better. We did have a hiccup a couple of weeks before she moved. It started because of a winter coat. I had suggested that even though her new home would be in a tropical climate, it might be wise to take a winter coat or heavy jacket with her. My logic was simply that she may end up flying into a country where she'd need cold weather apparel, and without a coat, it would cost her at least $100 to get a reasonably good coat. Words were exchanged, and we agreed to disagree on the concept. It turns out she thought I was suggesting she take everything she had in the house with her, because we didn't want any sign that she had ever lived in the house. I don't know how she came to the conclusion that I didn't want any trace of her in my comment, but that was what she gleaned from my advice. In the weeks before she moved, we took a beach vacation with all of us and my parents, visited my in-laws, had family movie nights, ate meals from our favorite restaurants, had bridal showers, practiced our daddy-daughter dance while crying like babies, sold her car for 2k more than what she bought it for two years prior, and helped her get all of her packing done. After Thanksgiving, we took her to the airport, and she was gone. Two and a half weeks later, we headed down for the wedding. We met our son-in-law and his family for the first time, and despite the language barrier, we were all enjoying each other's company. I managed to dust off my six years of high school and college Spanish, and gave my daddy speech in both Spanish and English at the reception. The ceremony was beautiful. My daughter was beautiful. My whole family knew, extended and immediate was beautiful and handsome. Since the wedding, we have stayed in touch with each other almost every day. She's starting to see a lot of things from a different perspective, and I know a lot of that is because she has her own life now with her husband. I couldn't help but chuckle when she explained how cold one of their honeymoon destinations was and that she was glad to have her coat. I even joked with her about how being overprepared for the situation saved her a lot of headaches and some money. I've never seen her so happy, and I'm glad she found a man who loves her and treats her well. We're eagerly looking forward to having her come home to visit in about two months. I'm sure the pleasant outcome will probably disappoint many fellow Redditors. I mean who doesn't love piling on a frustrated parent by shaming them and scoffing at every decision they have made to give their kid a better start than they had at her age? S. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.